Fall is in the air, and I'm really excited for that cool, crisp feel, and the smell of the leaves is going to be beautiful. And right now we are in the thick of harvest season for tomatoes, peppers, lettuce, eggplant, and all the other beautiful things you can think of. I invite you into my kitchen today at Witch Hollow Homesteading where I will show you how I'm going to make homemade V8 juice and pressure can it. This will be the first time that I am using my pressure canner and I am very excited to show everyone. I did plant tomatoes this year, just like I do every year. However, when it comes to making juices, homemade sauce, um, a ketchup and salsa, I like to go pick plum tomatoes, and plum tomatoes are something that I don't grow. I stick to growing the tomatoes that I just love to eat fresh, which are the heirloom varieties. So that is why I have these bright red plum tomatoes from Swiss Stack Farms. This is my first time making V8 juice. I'm making it because I have always loved V8 juice ever since I was a kid. And my problem is you can't buy it in organic. And it also comes in a plastic bottle, which I do try to avoid as well. So I had this great idea to make my own V8 juice. Spoiler alert, it is amazing when it's all done and it tastes exactly like V8 juice. I am making up my own recipe when it comes to the vegetables that I'm using in the V8 juice but I am following the instructions in my pressure canner guide where I'm going to do 22 pounds of tomatoes to three cups of all of the other vegetables that I'm adding. My tomatoes are all washed and I did weigh them out ahead of time so I know what 22 pounds of tomatoes are. I'm just gonna begin by cutting the tops off and then cutting the tomatoes into chunks you don't have to make the pieces really tiny although I will say if you do cut them pretty small it will cook up a little bit faster but I don't think that really matters considering we're gonna add all the other vegetables and have to cook it a while anyway while I'm dicing up the tomatoes I want to talk quickly about the pressure canner I realized that I was gonna make this V8 juice and there was no way around it, I had to use the pressure canner. And I had tested it out a couple of times. As they say to do, just put a little water in the bottom and run a batch in the pressure canner just without any jars, just to make sure you know how it works and how to use it. I did that a few times and it was good to do because I learned the mistakes I was making so that by the time I was ready to use the pressure canner for the V8 juice, I, I felt pretty confident. I was still a little nervous, especially because I was filming this and I thought, oh no, I hope this turns out. But it works perfectly. I diced up all of my tomatoes and I put them on the stove on medium high heat, put the lid on, and I am going to just let them cook a little while so that the juices release. And in the meantime, I am gonna go and cut up the remaining three cups of my vegetables. The most important ingredient for me is the watercress. Without the watercress, it's not gonna taste like V8 juice. It will taste like tomato vegetable juice, but it won't taste exactly like V8. So I highly recommend getting watercress if you can. The chopped up watercress ended up equaling one cup, which was good. Now I have another two cups to go for my other vegetables. I'm gonna dice up some celery. As you can see, I'm cutting it very fine and that's because I want it to cook quickly. I did one cup of celery. I'm adding fresh carrots from our garden. 
I did a little less than one cup of carrots, so I did about three quarters of a cup. And then I also diced up some fresh spinach that completed that one cup. The last ingredient is a quarter of a cup of freshly diced parsley. And this was parsley from our garden. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your tomatoes in the pot because you don't want them to stick. And definitely give them a stir every couple of minutes. But before I add the chopped veggies, I'm just gonna take my immersion blender and just grind up the tomatoes a little bit so that I have a little more space. The veggies have been cooking for about 10 minutes, covered, and I come over every few minutes and give it a stir. Now I'm gonna stir it really well again, and I'm gonna get the immersion blender out and just start blending a little bit more. You don't have to add beets, but I added three slices of beets just to enhance the color and make it a little richer. At this point, I have been cooking the juice on medium heat for about 35 to 40 minutes. Just depends on how hot your burner gets. And let me show you what I am going to use in order to separate the skins and the seeds from the tomato. This is my mom's food mill. I think it's called a food mill. I looked it up online. It says cone and pestle set. I'm not 100% sure. I've heard it called a sieve before as well. And all of those things pull back kind of the same results. But anyway, this is my mother's. She has had it forever and she gave it to me and it's so sturdy. We had bought an expensive food mill last year to make sauce and it broke after using it three times and I was so disappointed. I love this because I know this is not gonna break and this worked so much easier than an expensive food mill. So I would highly recommend if you are interested in some type of food mill, getting a cone and pestle set. You will not regret it. I am going to add my hot juice into here and then I'm going to take the pestle and slowly push it through the sieve and grind it down. And then every so often, I'm gonna take the skins and the seeds and dump them out into a bowl. And they are perfect to use in a compost pile. Once I'm all done with the food mill, I return the liquid back to the pot. Make sure you wash your pot in between, because if not, anything that's stuck to the bottom of the pot will now stick even more and I'm telling you this from experience because I didn't wash this pot in between the batches and I had a whole lot of burnt tomatoes stuck to the bottom that I had to then get out. So pro tip, wash your pot in between. In order to make it just a little bit thicker, I added two cans of organic tomato paste and that was the perfect amount. I'm gonna let this cook on medium low heat for about 15 minutes or so, just so I can get the tomato paste to thoroughly dissolve. While the V8 juice is cooking, I am going to get my glass jars set and ready along with my lids and my rings. Now, in this video, you're gonna see me sterilizing the jars and the lids and everything. I learned after this video that as long as your jars are washed and your lids are brand new right out of the box, you don't need to sterilize your jars or lids if you are canning over 240 degrees for 10 minutes or more. Now, for some reason, um, certain jams take only 10 minutes to can. So if you were only gonna water bath can for 10 minutes, you should sterilize your jars. But 
anything over 10 minutes canning, that's the whole point of canning is to sterilize everything that's in the jar. So that is a big time saver. I don't know, probably everyone else knows that, but me, it's just an old habit and it's hard to break an old habit, but I'm trying. So in this video, I did sterilize. I have my pressure canner out and I am beginning by putting water into the bottom of the pressure canner. So they say two to three inches of water in the bottom of your pressure canner. As you can see, I am using a flexible measuring tape and this is just for now so that I learn what two or three inches look like in the pan. However, a ring does form around the pot inside so that now when I fill it, I know exactly where I need to fill it to, but this was just in the beginning while learning. To each jar, I am adding a half a teaspoon of Himalayan salt, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and a little bit of ground pepper. I will be hot packing these jars, so the jars are still warm from me sterilizing them. Um, I am going to be putting the hot juice right into the jars and then putting those jars right into the pot. I'm leaving about an inch of headspace at the top of the jar. I put a lid back on my pot that has the V8 juice in because I wanna keep that very warm and I will return that to the stove next time before I pack more jars. I also learned that if you take a paper towel and put some white distilled vinegar on it and wipe your rims, that is the best way to guarantee that you cleaned your rims and your jars seal properly. I wanna mention here about putting your lids on and tightening your rings. So when it comes to water bath canning, which is what I was familiar with, finger tight is always the rule. However, I learned with pressure canning, finger tight, same roll, but just a little bit looser compared to water bath canning. I ended up making some canned beets and I did finger tight for the lids just like I would for a water bath canner. And when I took them out of the pressure canner, the lids wouldn't seal. And I thought, what is going on? Oh, the, the ring is too tight. And I went to loosen the ring while the jars were still hot, sitting out to cool. <gasps> Don't do that because the liquid shot everywhere. So my tip is finger tight, but just a little bit looser than you would do for a water bath canner. In total, I can fit seven of these pint-sized jars in the bottom of the pot. Now, this pot does have another shelf and you can stack more jars on top of that, but I'm not sure if that's meant for the pint-sized jars or bigger. That probably would work well for the small jelly jars or the short round jars. This just seemed like it was gonna maybe touch the lid and that made me a little nervous. So single layer I did. If you have the American pressure canner and you double stack pint-sized jars in it, 
please let me know and let me know what size it is because I would be willing to do it. I just want to make sure someone else has done it first. It says in the book that every time you go to pressure can, you need to take a little bit of olive oil on a paper towel and rub it right around the top where your pot lid is going to go and where it's going to seal. I'm assuming that helps it seal. I'm not 100% sure, but I am not to question them because they're the ones that make the pressure canner. So the pressure canner is sitting on the burner now. I am going to get my lid and before I put my lid on, I am going to check to make sure that I can see through the valve steam hole. If I could not see through it, then that would mean I would need to take a piece of wire and clean it out before I put the lid on and turn the heat on. Getting this lid on takes some practice and I'm going to leave this in to show you how long it took me to get it aligned properly. If you don't align it properly, steam will leak out of the lid and you will never get your pressure canner up to the right pressure that you need. I will say I just used my pressure canner to make more V8 juice yesterday and it does get so much easier the more you do this, but it just takes some finagling in the beginning and some learning. So I align it and then I look around the whole outside of the pressure canner to make sure that the lid looks even. And what I'm looking for is that gap spot between the lid and the pot itself. I want that gap to look even all the way around before I start tightening the lid. Also, if you put the lid on a little crooked and let's say the lid does not leak at all when you're bringing the can up to temperature, what you will notice when you are done canning and you let it go back down to zero pressure, you won't be able to get the lid off because it will have vacuum sealed itself on. So you would need to take a hammer just on the lip of the lid and pull up slightly and it'll pop. Just telling you that in case that happens to you because the first time I tested out the pressure canner, that is exactly what happened and I couldn't get the lid off and I had to look it up online as to what to do. So you can take a hammer and just pop it off so you break that vacuum seal. But if you put your lid on properly, you won't have to worry about it. You're going to want to tighten the nuts down really tightly, but you want to do it evenly. You want to tighten opposite sides when you're tightening them. That way, the lid has that even gap all the way around. Okay, so I have the temperature on almost high heat and we're starting to get steam come out of the valve. You're gonna let this vent for 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, you're going to take your jiggler per the elevation in the book and place the jiggler on the pot and lower your heat just a little bit and wait till it gets up to the proper pressure. Now that my jiggler is going off, I am going to lower the heat so that I can maintain pressure. And according to where I live for elevation, I am going to pressure can this V8 juice at 10 pounds of pressure for 15 minutes. And the jiggler, you want it to jiggle one to four times a minute. If it's going off more than that, you need to lower your heat a little bit more. I'm so excited that it's working. <laughs> this is the first time I actually canned anything in the pressure canner officially, and I'm just ecstatic that it's working. <laughs> when the 15 minutes are up, I'm going to turn the heat off completely and then let the pressure canner sit here and allow it to depressurize on its own until the gauge reads zero. Once the gauge reads zero, you can now remove the jiggler and that will release the remaining pressure.
since there is no more steam coming out of the vent, I am now going to slowly unscrew the lid and open the lid away from me because there is going to be a lot of steam coming out. And here I am, I wanna show you what to do with a hammer if the lid is stuck. You put it right underneath one of these little tabs and just pull up and as you can see the lid pops and you're good to go. I'm going to remove these jars carefully from the pressure canner and put them out on a table to cool. They are definitely a lot hotter because the temperature is higher coming out of the pressure canner versus coming out of a water bath canner. So just keep that in mind when you're taking these out and letting them cool. You will see them still bubbling sitting out to cool for at least another half hour or so. In the end, this batch of V8 juice made 23 jars. I don't think that's going to last very long since I do love it. So I will have to pace myself for the next year until I can make some more. But I did do another batch of V8 juice just yesterday. So now I've doubled my supply. Hopefully that'll get me through the year. Now that I have pressure canned, and water bath canned. I've never used a steam bath canner, which I'm thinking about getting one next year. I will say, I do really like pressure canning. I think it goes a bit quicker. And once you get the hang of it, it is a bit easier because you know what temperature is in the pot. You don't just have to listen for it to come to a steady boil in order to start your timer. So it's much more accurate, but I did enjoy it and I am no longer scared of my pressure canner. I thought I would quickly show you how I like to drink my V8 juice. I like it room temperature and I really enjoy adding some horseradish along with some liquid aminos. It just gives it that added kick that I really enjoy. Let me know in the comments how you like drinking your vegetable juice. Thank you so much for joining me at Witch Hollow Homesteading today. I hope you found this video helpful and inspiring. Please let me know if you have a pressure canner, what do you like to pressure can? And if you don't have a pressure canner and you wanna get one, ask questions. Tell me things you're scared of. Tell me what you're excited about. I would love to talk more about pressure canners and Honestly, I could sit down for quite a long time and talk about it. <laughs>